Hey YouTubers, welcome aboard. This is a, a part of a new series I'm doing called Ride Alongs. The idea is to get uh, exposure for uh, younger kids up in the cockpit and uh, see what it's all about. So my first candidate is Nolan. Nolan is from uh, Indiana State University, lives here in town and has his private pilot's license working on his instrument rating and you'll get a chance to meet him here shortly. So I hope you guys enjoy these series. Well, headed out to the airport for another flight today. Let's give AWOS a call and see what is going on because it looks pretty windy, pretty snowy. Looks like a pretty good crosswind. Let's give them a call and see what they say. Hey guys, out here in the airplane uh, getting ready to uh, depart and I want to introduce to my right my co-pilot for this trip, part of my ride along series that I just told you guys about. So uh, Nolan is to my right and Nolan you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe your aviation background? Yeah, my name is Nolan like he said. I'm a senior at ISU, graduating in May. I'm going for aviation management on manned systems and then I do private pilot flight training or private flight training out of Eagle Creek. Uh, in a archer. Uh, my aviation background is that my grandfather was a pilot for Allegheny. He, oh, that's cool. yeah, he died in a uh, mid-air collision back in, I believe it was uh, '69. Oh wow! Yeah, in London, Indiana. So after that, surprisingly, my uncle and my dad both went on to be pilots. Uh, my dad doesn't fly anymore, but my uncle's a, a captain at Delta. He was on the 747 but those are retired, so he's going to the 7576. Oh, that's cool. So I, it's kind of a family thing. I got yeah. into it. I looked around at colleges. They were right. all kind of pretty expensive. So I found an instructor at Eagle Creek who had a plane. It was a plane club. So I started doing that. I uh, couldn't solo in it because I wasn't on the insurance. So I soloed at Mount Comfort and then uh, eventually found a spot in the club, got into it, and I've been flying that plane ever since. That's awesome. A lot of aviation in your in your yeah. family line there, so that's that's very cool. Well, welcome aboard. It's a Thank pleasure you. to have you along, it's and a uh, to be here. Glad you took the time to do it. Thanks for the offer. Okay, get some avionics going here. Parking brakes on. Check our cross feeds. Two independent fuel systems, but you can cross feed from one and one to the other. Really, only the time you'd really do that is if you were running single engine. Yeah. I was running fuel out of another. So I can go ahead and shut off the fuel valves to the engine. I can energize the boost pumps. I have no fuel pressure. If the valve opens, I have fuel pressure now. So that confirms that I can shut the fuel valves off to the engine if I ever needed to. Let's go ahead and get our uh, AWOS. Visibility 5, light snow, 
Healing 1,700. Broken 2,200. Overcast temperature minus 2 Celsius. Dew point minus 4. Altimeter 3002. Okay, so 002, you can dial it in on your gauge. So here's. Indianapolis Executive Airport. So 002, yeah. Oh. And then it has it has a yellow bar underneath it until until the two of them match. So right now we don't have a flight plan in. So we can come over here to the FMS flight plan. <clears throat> Whatever we type in is going to end up on what's called the scratch pad. So see, it's down there at the bottom. Okay. And then you tell it where you want it to go. So I'm going to start that at the origin. And I'm going to start KGPT. It's our destination. I'm going to execute it. I'm going to go departure arrival. I'm going to say we're going to do the Hoosier 5 pocket city transition. And we're going to go off of runway 18. We're going to execute it. So then we can come back up here and take a look and see what that looks like. So you can see it only has us going to the pocket city. And then it doesn't know what to do after that. So we can come over here and just put the destination in for now. And it will finish it off for us. Then we can come over here to performance. Performance initialize. There will be three of us on board. Let's just say we got 50 pounds of cargo, even though we don't. 3,600 pounds of fuel. And we're going to go down there at 40,000 feet. So if you type something in you don't like, you can hit this clear delete button and it will remove it. Drop it in there and execute. So we are pretty much good to go on that. And let's see. So I can go on the overhead test switch, I can go all the way to pause. So I can do my enunciators, my fire detector, my bleeds, and then pause. So now I can't go any further until I get um, the engine started. So really I'm just waiting now at this point for, for everybody else to show up. But the way the cockpit's laid out, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so the FMS here, radios here. I can actually bring the radios over to this side and tune them on this side, but I cannot bring the FMS to this side. So that's why most of the time for single pilot, you'll see guys run it like this. But this is all my ice protection, gear, electrical, fuel, environmental, enunciator panel, standby instruments, fire gauges basically, autopilot, lighting. It looks like Power. a lot, but when you look at it, it's... Oh, yeah, yeah. When yeah. you start to dissect it, it's not bad at all. I mean, I just have a six-pack and a Garmin 430. And it does just fine. Yeah. Gets me where I need to go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you're still more than welcome to come out and fly with me anytime. Yeah, I'd like that. Once it gets warm and not like this. Yeah. All you gotta do is press the start button, starter's engaged, wait till 12% N2, introduce fuel, there's light off. So watch for the white, can't go past the red cross up there. The red line's normal, upper limit, but the starts, they give you a higher limit.
Okay, you hear me all right? Yep, you got me. Yep, I got you. So, if you look out across the top of the wing, that's speed brakes, that is extended. You can see the white moniker here, speed brake extended. Okay. So I'll go ahead and put it back down. I gotta do a roll check here. Why we do that, we can keep it going. Yeah, you gotta go through this whole bit check before you can uh, take off. Alright, if you look out across the top of the wing again, I'm gonna do lift up. Yep.
Quad is 368 November Golf, the approach. Understand you have the weather at Eagle Creek, thank you. You want the visual approach? The altimeter is 3005. Climbing up 5,000 feet a minute. Is that about what an archer does? Um, we're going to go yeah. left direct Hoosier. Left turn direct Hoosier, Zerg off Mike. I'd just now be turning crosswind. <laughs> November 4 is 01 Golf Sierra. Contact Indy Approach 121.1. 121.1, 1 Golf Sierra, thanks. Okay. November 6, yeah. Charlie, change to my frequency, please, 120.65. 1065. Zero, zero Golf Mike, contact Indy Center, 119.55. We'll see you later. Thank you, 55. Zero Golf Mike, looking forward to getting you in the right seat. Andy Premier, 390 Golf Mike, 11,000, climbing 1, 3,000. 390 Golf Mike, Andy Center, welcome. Higher in a moment. Better. Alrighty. Yeah, it happens pretty quick. Yeah. That's why some people are like, well, you should talk more, and it's like... There's no time to talk. There's no time to talk. I, I mean, I can talk at cruise, but the problem was talking at cruise is that I end up having to talk over the controllers the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> you don't realize how, how busy the airspace is until you actually try to try to narrate, you know, a video, and it's just a constant flow. So, 13,000... Three zero, Gulf Mike, traffic 12 o'clock, uh, three miles, turning south. Eastbound, the uh, heavy 7 4 to level 1 9 or 5 for, uh, for 1 4,000. Okay, Zerg off Mike, we're looking. Oh, I'd like to see him. 747? Yeah. So, 13,000 feet, if you leave the throttles parked in max continuous thrust or MCT, you'll overspeed. So, uh, this, you gotta be... Got Over to 390 Golf Mike, climb maintain level 230. Five level 230, Zergolf Mike. So, I've changed the altitude selector to 23,000. I haven't told him how, I'm gonna, how I want to climb, so you can see it's still stuck in altitude mode. So now I can tell it how I want it to climb. So initially I'll kind of just give it a pitch up. 475, kind of get it going. Contact it approach 121.1. 311, I'm pull out of 10, 20. Just kind of start climbing away. And then I'll, depending on a variety of factors, I might just uh, switch it over to pitch, or, you know, or leave it in pitch, or I might also take it and uh, use flight level change, which will hold an airspeed. That way you don't inadvertently stall? Yeah, exactly. We're one Papa Tango, fix that to your route of flight to keep you uh, north of active military space if I've been running Alright, one Papa Tango ready to copy now. So you can see it's bleeding off air speed. So one thing is the 240 on the climb direct change. It grabs it at the speed that you hit. India, Lima, Lima. So coming through 18,000 feet, you can go to standard altimeters. So you can just hit that. Right, Greg, present position to go off Alpha and Lima, Lima. And then destination Morgantown, 1510, 230. Right, 1510, are you back, correct? GPS 2557, contact Louisville approach, 134.15. 3415, 2557, ready, good day. Good day. So I'm in nav mode on the autopilot. I'm still on my FMS. Number 390, Zero Golf Mike, contact Indy Center, 125.12. 2512, Zero Golf Mike, good day. 
little bit of light chop. Control 76, Roger, welcome. Nothing worse than that. Light chop, clear direct Nashville. Direct to Nashville, American 1276. Andy Premier, 390, Golf Mike, flight level 210, climbing flight level 230. Premier, 390, Golf Mike, thank you, sir, Roger, welcome. Climb, maintain, flight level 290. Flight level 290, Zero Golf Mike. So we can go port performance, flight log. We've been airborne eight minutes. We're climbing through 22,000 feet. We've gone 35 miles and we've burned 300 pounds of fuel. That's insane. Eight minutes, I'd just not be leaving <laughs> in their space, if that. Living the life. It's not a bad way to move around. I got some water there for you if you have it. Okay, good. Breakfast lawn service. That's a viewer out of uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Got a big lawn mowing company. I think he does a lot of big commercial jobs. So he likes to watch my videos while he's mowing. So he must oh, yeah. have some pretty big rigs. Yeah. Super nice guy. So how often? You fly somewhere. I know just a couple days ago you were coming back from Florida. Yeah, probably um, fly about 20 hours a month. Somewhere around there. It varies. Sometimes it'll be more, sometimes it'll be less. Yeah, it might be as few as eight hours in a month. Number zero, go Mike, with Direct Pocket City, contact Andy Center 133.42. Direct Pocket City 3342, we'll see you as there, go Mike. Got a breaker 4413, contact Indy Center 120.57. 2057 Southwest 760 Indy Premier 390 Golf Mike 267 climbing flight level 290. Right, 390 Golf Mike, Indy Center, welcome. Climbing team flight level 340. Flight level 340, Zero Golf Mike. I'm going to spin that to 340. Thank you. Golf Port, we can start getting that set up. Now there's the weather, the METAR. 350 and 14, gusting to 22, 10 miles, few clouds at 1100, scattered 1700, overcast 3300, 14 degrees Celsius. A little bumpy. Okay, there's that light chop. So we'll get up to altitude, turn the cameras off, and uh, get them back on for the uh, arrival back in to Gulfport. So when you prepare for a flight, how far in advance do you start that? Well, if I know it's coming, uh, a lot of times on the previous weekend, I'll start planning for them and kind of getting them ready to go. And then the, uh, the night before, I always take some time to sit down and look at it and look at the airport, look at all the approaches, you know, make sure it's going to work, read all the notums and, um, you know, just try to get a feel for exactly what's going on. And that way in the morning, I can just kind of check everything just to make sure nothing's changed, check the weather, and I'm pretty much ready to go. Uh, I'll always call out the day before, get the fuel load taken care of the day before, get all that, get all that ready. So when I get out to the airplane, the airplane, other than loading into the flight plan, the airplane's pretty much ready to go. Then with regard to the flight plan, I get, I get a text message of what the most, what the, what the routing is most likely going to be. So uh, that's very helpful. FedEx 650, Clitter and Wisma intersection. All my life, I wanted to go, go into the airline. Clitter and Wisma intersection, just in the main when I ended up getting into school, I started learning, uh, you know, it's not all it seems to be, right. especially when you're first starting, so that's when I started looking at corporate charter, Yep. and that just really appeals to me, the, the lifestyle, sure. the aircraft you fly. Well, to each his own, you know, there's a lot of people that fly corporate, 
wouldn't want to touch the airline. There's a lot of guys who fly the airlines and wouldn't want to touch corporate. So, Hi. whatever, whatever's the match for you. I mean, in today's day and age, you're not going to have a problem getting a job in either field, so, or either either category. Okay, thank you. Six one six. So you can tell we're plus seven Celsius over standard, so that's going to really impact the performance of the airplane in a negative way. Okay, so 22 minutes airborne, and we're leveling off at 40,000 feet. About 100 nautical miles, we've burned 570 pounds of fuel. Fire from zero fifteen oh eight flight level three eight zero hundred fifteen zero eight inch. Should expect light chopper off. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. So I can see it's capturing the altitude. Level off, and we'll start accelerating now. Really smooth. It didn't even feel like we leveled out. The autopilot does an awesome job flying the airplane. Believe me, I know because I use it all the time. Have my viewers remind me. If you have it, use it. I have a trim wheel. <laughs> but you can see on that departure, if you were hand flying that entire departure, I mean, how much higher the workload gets. Yeah. That was shit. Twenty six would be with you. Three eight zero. Just starting to swim out. Plus, I mean, the airlines or any of these airplanes, very little hand flying goes on. Houston, Premier 390 Golf Mike, 32.6 across 70 north of Gulf Port at flight level 280. Premier 390 Golf Mike, Houston, the center, Roger, welcome. Thank you. I would have given you that radio call, but it was a lot. Oh, you're fine. Chicago 37, contact Houston Center 127. Alrighty, so let's take a look here. We've been airborne an hour and 27 minutes, covered 513 nautical miles, burned 1,570 pounds of fuel, so about 230 gallons, something like that. And we are 21 minutes out. Had a headwind the whole way. Hopefully we'll have that tailwind on the way back. Yep, absolutely. Weather at Gulfport. Winds 360-13, gusts to 18, 10 miles visibility. Approach at 845, 3015, the altimeter. Or surrounding areas, go on high water. So if you pull out COM2, you'll hear A, you'll hear the AS. Increase in altitude, advise contact, give you the form. Number three, two lanes to Romeo, contact Memphis Center. One four two, English uniform. One four five three Zulu. One three six zero at one three. Gust one eight. Six thousand five hundred broken. Five zero one four two point zero nine. Altimeter zero three zero one five. Visual approach east, landing and departing runway three two and runway three six. Notice the airmen north five hundred feet of taxiway alpha closed. Personnel on a moving into the area and running the taxiway. As there is weather information for Mississippi and surrounding areas, available on high water and flight service frequencies. On DFR departures, advise ground control of type of aircraft. Destination, increasing altitude, advise mission contact, give uniform. Okay. From here, 3 to a golf flight, you guys recording? Oh, we are, and we just got you. Oh, excellent. I can't wait to see you. I watch you guys all the time. Appreciate that. Yeah, that's good stuff. I learned a lot. So do I. Get that a lot. Um, yeah, it's a fair amount, actually. I, I'm actually feeling really bad because most of the time I'm not recording my flights. So I don't see the guys. Miles to discretion of flight level 2-4-0, Delta-1967. Well, I had this going because I thought we were going to break through the clouds pretty soon, but... Might eventually.
It didn't look like a very thick layer from up high. It was funny, I was coming out of Florida the other day at Miami Center. The guy goes, uh, hey, Premier, Sir Gulf your voice sounds famous. Should it be? And uh, I said, well, I guess, I guess if it's possible to be famous on YouTube. He goes, oh, yeah, no, I know. I know exactly. Like, I love your videos. I was so bummed because it was such a funny thing, you know, such a funny little exchange. Yeah. I get that all the time, too. I'll be flying. Hey, <laughs> 56 <five>, Charlie. <laughs> I, I actually don't think famous on YouTube is a real thing, so that, that was it just, yeah. by the way. But that's what he said. I was just repeating what he said. I don't know. It seems like a lot of people know you. A lot of people like you. A lot of people seem to enjoy the videos, that's for sure. Yours are a lot different because usually, like, uh, fly chops are yep. random, kind of whatever he's right. doing that sure. week, and Absolutely. they're short. Stevos are like 30 minutes or so. Yep. I mean, you, you mostly right. have the whole fly. Right. Which I enjoy because I can just have it going in the background and doing homework or something and just listen and watch. Well, that's what I think is neat about YouTube right now. Is there's a lot, there's a, a lot of interesting variety out there, and everybody's kind of got their spot that they work in providing content. And um, I think it's, I think it's a nice variety. Yeah. Yeah, I hate it when everybody uploads all on the same day, and it's like, ah, oh, got to sit here and run right. four hours of content. Flight level 240. Flight level 240, Zergo, fine. Okay, go ahead and dial in flight level 240. Okay, then go ahead and hit, come over further to the left and hit VS. So it's up on the top. Okay, and then see this wheel down up? Yeah. Go ahead and run it down to 1,000 feet. So take, take your blue pointer on there. Okay. And go ahead and start going down. Other way. Oh. There you go. Thousand, okay. Now the airplane will grab that thousand foot descent rate and follow it on down. on the other side, Zergo Mike. Okay, perfect. Door 39, Zergo Mike. Contact you to the center on 126.8 again. Thanks for the good work, sir. All right, I appreciate that. 26.8, looking forward to uh, hearing you on the roof on the airways. Same here. Or something like that. Houston Premier, 39, Zergo Mike. 26.7, descending flight level 240. 39, Zergo Mike, Houston Center. Descend to maintain flight level 190. Flight level one nine or zero zero. Yeah, I got my descent checked on, so basically all I've got is now in his configuration. Lights, ignitions, gear flaps, engine sink off, and I'll arm the uh, lift up. Cloud cover. Yeah. Of course, your session and my mine will have basically the same same picture. Whole I bunch of I can send you all the footage. All right. And I didn't know if you're gonna make a video or not, so I packed everything so I could yeah I just record it all and then you're making videos. So I was like, I don't really need all this stuff. I'll just watch the video. <laughs> right.
Zero Golf Mike, descend to maintain 11000, Golf Pro Timber 3015. 11000, 3015, Zero Golf Mike. Okay, so now you can now see we are five minutes away, we're at 21,000 feet, so we're going to have to really pick up our descent rate. So we got to stay above that military zone. So. Well, now he's cleared us. Yep. You can see we're just clearing it. Yep, that's why we had to, that's why we're getting this drop in. Contact Golf Fort Approach 127.5. That for me. And three Golf Mike going to Golf Fort uh, Approach 27.5. Approach Premier 390 Golf Mike 15.8 descending 11,000 with uniform. Uh, 390 Delta Christian Golf Mike Golf Fort Approach expect the visual approach from Mike 32 descending 18 2000. Okay, we'll expect the visual 32 down to 2000. Zero Golf Mike. So why'd you turn the engine ignition on? Just get back. That's part of the pre-landing okay. checks. So basically now I'm I'm set up, ready to go. All I need is gear and flaps. November zero golf Mike, turn left heading one three five vector is downwind at visual. Left turn to one thirty five on the heading circle Mike. That, that puts places it places me on a right downwind, which is not ideal. Just because it I can't really see the airport out this side of the oh, airplane. Yeah. Okay, there's our chart. Zero Golf Mike, verify information uniform. Zero Golf Mike, we do have uniform. This is where you realize how fast you're going when you're going past clouds. Yeah. You can see it, it starts to come really quick now. So cool. That's like a main thing for me when I get my instrument is just to fly through clouds. Well, it, 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 that's the best rating to get. Yeah. The one that's going to make you the safest. Yeah, and you're going to keep your passengers the safest. It really opens up the, the opportunity for travel. Oh yeah, definitely. There's the ocean. Missouri Golf Mike, Gulfport Airport, uh, 3 to 4 o'clock and 4 miles. Missouri Golf Mike, Airport Insight. Right off the wing. Missouri Golf Mike, cleared visual approach from May 3 to Contact Tower 122.7. Clear to visual and go to Tower, Missouri Golf Mike, see you. Okay. So you see how I've got my guidance set up now. So even though I really can't see the airport, I, I know where it is. Yeah. But looking for that green line to come in. Yeah, there it is. Okay, here goes flaps. Here goes gear. Oh, you can feel it slow. Green. So about 60% in one or so is what I'll shoot for to kind of maintain my airspeed. It's just kind of a gouge. So you can see we're still, here comes the glide path in. So it's very similar to a ILS.
can see how much we got a fair amount of crosswind oh, here, yeah. as you can tell. Maybe one of these days I'll get lined up with the runway. Wild turbulence right there.
All right. Well, Nolan, thanks for riding along. I guess, uh, what did you think of it? Oh, thanks for inviting me. Yeah. I, it was great. Good, good. I mean, it was a lot more complex than I thought, but yeah. it was also a lot easier than I thought. Sure, I sure. Mean, Automation helps. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. So anything surprise you? I, everything. Going from a, <laughs> a single engine piston yeah. to this is just amazing. And, yeah. You know, I, I've been through clouds before, but nothing like where I'm sitting out front looking. And, uh, just the complexity yep. of the avionics. Sure. Is something amazing. Uh, Good. You have a you have an awesome life. All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate you riding along. Thanks for having me. All right. Good having you. Hey, P1D fans. Thanks for riding along with me today. And as always, you can follow me on Instagram at Premier One Driver. And I don't ask for money for my videos, but if you want some cool swag, you can go to my website, PremierOneDriver.com, and get yourself a cool t-shirt or hat. Thanks for watching. Fly safe. We'll see you next time.